What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the brand new Kobe AD NXT 360. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't yet and want to see more reviews just like this one. Also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler. But with all that out of the way, let's get into it. First off, the name of this shoe? Stupid. What? I just, I don't understand. Just call it the Kobe 360. Why do you need the AD? Why do you need the NXT? I just don't get it. But in all seriousness, this is of course the brand new Kobe Performance sneaker that just dropped for Mama Day this year. There's a lot of brand new performance tech that actually went into this sneaker, so I'm really excited to check it out. I haven't really had a chance to play in this shoe that much yet, so this is going to be more of a lifestyle review than a performance review. But if you guys would like to see a performance review, let me know in the comment section down below. So without further ado, let's jump right into the Kobe AD NXT 360. Starting off on the upper of the sneaker, you've got one of those performance upgrades that I was talking about. The entire upper of the shoe is actually made up of black 360 flyknit. And what that means, rather than most flyknit based shoes where the flyknit ends when it connects to the midsole, this flyknit construction actually goes all the way around the foot, hence the name 360. That's apparently supposed to help you get a more secure fit and help you with lockdown on the court. The flyknit material itself doesn't feel like usual flyknit. It definitely feels more plasticky and actually a lot thinner. Even though the flyknit does seem to fit a little bit better because it's a little bit thinner, durability definitely seems like it might be an issue in the future. And maybe that's just something I'm thinking because I haven't really had a chance to play in the shoe yet, but I'm honestly a little nervous. In some places, the flyknit is actually so thin you can see right through to your foot and the drop in midsole. One pretty major upside of the super thin flyknit is that the shoe should be very, very breathable. Continuing up on the shoe around the laces, the flyknit gets significantly thicker. That's to help with durability around the eyelet so that the laces don't pull through the material over time. The laces themselves are flat black laces and do provide some pretty nice lockdown when you tighten up the shoe. On the Kobe 80 NXT 360, you've actually got a fully separate tongue made completely of flyknit. At the top of the tongue you've got this white iridescent Kobe logo. Inside the shoe you've got a black sock liner with heavy padding around the heel. And then getting to one of the most interesting features of the sneaker, the drop in midsole. The Kobe line is pretty well known for their use of drop in midsoles which in the past have provided a very customizable fit. One thing you'll notice is that the drop in midsole actually provides a large amount of structure to the shoe. So without it you can pretty much completely crumple the shoe because there's no support in the midsole. Actually if you look inside the shoe without the drop in midsole you can see where the 360 knit wraps all the way around the sneaker. And then through that 360 knit you can actually see all the way through the translucent outsole. Literally, the flyknit is glued directly onto the rubber outsole itself. But that's what makes this drop-in midsole so interesting. This midsole actually features a huge amount of tech, and one of the biggest selling points about the Kobe AD NXT 360 is that the midsole is actually formed with a combination of Phylon and React. When looking at the midsole itself, you can actually tell the Phylon and the React from each other because of the different tones of color. The React foam cushion is a slightly pinker area running down the center of the midsole, and then the Phylon creates the outer edges that add some more rigid support. And actually, interestingly enough, Nike indicated where the Phylon and where the React were on the outsole of the sneaker. The Phylon being the translucent blue area and the React being the neon green area. Turning the midsole over to the bottom, you've got this traction area so it doesn't slide around on the inside of the shoe. You've also got this stiff TPU plate in the midfoot for support. And then on the medial side, you've got a stiff TPU Nike swoosh. Instead of the sneaker having an insole, your foot actually rests directly on the drop-in midsole. And where your forefoot rests, Nike actually added a little diagram about how your forefoot sits in the shoe. As for the comfort of the drop-in midsole, I've got to say because your foot sits directly on top of it, feels great. You feel super low to the ground, you feel very supported. My favorite part is the React right under your heel because it's extremely soft and extremely cushioned, so on heel strikes it feels great. The React actually feels great all the way throughout the shoe. It's really soft and bouncy when you're walking, and then when you're running it stiffens up just a little bit to give you a little bit more support. As for fit, the Kobe AD NXT 360 does seem to fit a little bit long. If you have more narrow feet, you could probably get away with going down half a size. However, if you have wider feet, you might want to stay true to size or maybe not even get this shoe. But as I always suggest, if you have a chance to try on the shoe first, make sure to do that before you buy it to make sure the sizing is right for you. Continuing back on the sneaker, you've got this silvery white iridescent Nike swoosh. And then moving around to the back of the shoe, you've got this pretty small TPU heel counter. The medial side of the heel counter is Kobe's signature. And then rounding off the heel of both sneakers, you've got two red embroidered details. The right shoe has Kobe's logo, and then the four stripes on the left shoe indicate the four feet of thread needed to close up Kobe's last ankle surgery. Finally, moving to the bottom of the sneaker, you've got a pretty rounded translucent outsole. The heel of the outsole is actually extremely rounded and has sort of a ball-like shape. As I mentioned before, 
you've got the two separate colors in the outsole to indicate where the React cushion is and where the Phylon cushion is. And then as for traction, you've got this pretty widely spaced traction pattern. The herringbone or diamond style traction on the forefoot feels very stiff, whereas the traction on the heel feels pretty soft. This is definitely a shoe you only want to play in inside because if you play in it outside, it's going to wear down super fast. Overall, the ridiculously named Kobe AD NXT 360 seems like it's going to be a great basketball shoe. Until I play in it, I won't know for sure, so if you guys want to see that performance review, make sure to leave that comment in the comment section down below. As for it being a lifestyle shoe, it definitely has some very soccer-inspired vibes, as we've seen from a lot of other Kobe's in the past. If you like this low-top black and blue colored sneaker, it's definitely a good one to grab. Keep in mind, it's 200 bucks, so it's definitely pricey if you're just wearing it for lifestyle. But even with the flashy, iridescent Nike swoosh, I still think it's a really clean-looking shoe. If you're trying to grab the Kobe AD NXT 360, this particular colorway is already sold out. There will definitely be more colorways of these dropping in the future, so you can either wait for those or pay a little bit over retail on the resale market. Now that we've got the review out of the way, let's put these guys on feet and see how they look. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Kobe AD NXT 360 and whether you're planning to pick up a pair for yourself in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.